This is the Hockey Podcast Network, your home for hockey talk on every team in the NHL. Calgary Flames fans, it's time for Flames Unfiltered. Entertaining and controversial hockey talk with your host, Brad Brew. 50 minutes of flat out ugly hockey. But the Flames get it done, earn two points. Good evening, welcome to Flames Unfiltered, episode number 46, recorded on a late night Wednesday night, March 4th, 2020. I'm the host of the show, Brad Brood. Stayed up a little late tonight, finished watching the Flames beat the Blue Jackets, and then, boy, I couldn't shut that Arizona-Vancouver game off as Arizona comes back to beat the Canucks 4-2, to two, and that tightens even the Pacific up just a little bit more. First game back after a long road trip is always scary for every team, and I worried about it for the last three days for the Flames, especially with everything going on at home and everything. And and you know what? Let's get serious. The first 50 minutes were damn scary. The Flames cannot afford to start hockey games that bad and still salvage points. It's a slippery slope. No team can survive. Talbot gets the shot in net tonight after a shutout. Last time he got a shutout in Anaheim, did not get the start after that game. And I uh, was happy to see him back in the net tonight. I think he's been the calmer of the two goalies. And uh, not really happy with the way he started the night, though. Um, I think he wants that first one back. But, you know, to credit him, he held in tough tonight um, and got the job done. And and, and overall, after a, a tough first goal on him, I thought looked strong the rest of the way points are so critical this time of year and i know it doesn't matter how you get them or how ugly it looks or um, even if the team that uh, you're playing against makes the game ugly and i think that was a case a little bit tonight and we'll talk about that a little bit more later on in the show but consistency is still a problem for calgary it just is we can't run from that fact on today's show, we're going to recap that scary come-from-behind victory at home tonight against Columbus, and then we'll discuss some other issues like consistency and how do how does this team find a way to meet the expectations at home? And then we'll talk about Austin Zarnick and ask the question, why is he not on the Flames roster? Then we roll into some Flames news, news from around the National Hockey League, and then some very interesting fan question. We wrap the episode with a preview of Friday's home matchup against the Arizona Coyotes and a scary game Sunday at home against the hated Vegas Golden Knights. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Flames Unfiltered. The Hockey Podcast Network, which Flames Unfiltered is proud to be part of, has a great podcast called Tales with TR, a hockey podcast. Hosted by former National Hockey League player Terry Ryan, Yep, you heard him on Spittin' Chicklets, and he has you laughing on every episode. Check out Tales with TR, a hockey podcast on the Hockey Podcast Network. Every team, everywhere, the Hockey Podcast Network. All right, Flames fans. This is kind of an interesting game to recap. It ends with a 3-2 overtime victory for the Calgary Flames. That is the good news. The bad news is, probably didn't go like we all scripted it. Didn't start off real good. You know what? I take that back. The first three, four minutes, I thought Calgary looked pretty good. And at the five-minute mark of the first period, Matthew Kachuk takes a shot Blocks a shot in the inside of his knee. It looked like is where it hit. The shot came from Zach Warinsky. Kachuk goes off. Return mm, about four or five minutes later in the first period. Had a shift. Then we didn't see him again for a little while. Then was back as normal for the rest of the game. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that injury. And if that's something we need to worry about 
as a Flames fan because you never want to see anybody get injured, and boy, you sure don't want to see one of your better players get injured. And you know, there's been so many injuries on shot blocks lately. I, I get really, really nervous on it. I mean, I, yes, I want the guys to go down and block shots, but you know, it gets, it gets scary. Columbus scores on its second shot of the game. That is so not what we needed here at home. So not. Devin Shore, you know, gets by and fires one, and it's a bad one. It was a bad angle shot, and uh, Talbot probably would like that one back. It may have been deflected a little bit uh, hard to determine that one. Gustav Nyquist scored a nice goal later on on a turnover from Michael Backlund. And the turnovers reigned supreme in the first period. Nyquist gets his 14th at the 11-20 mark. 2 to nothing. Columbus. Second period rolled on through with no goals for either team. But the Flames just looked to lack emotion and that push. They just lack the push. And in the second period, I thought they were just flat. You know, they, And we were trying to do things that were just out of character, like just got to get basic turnovers were happening backland who's been amazing lately had a turnover magia pani who's been amazing lately had a bad turnover in the second period and it just kind of went on and on but then the good news happened and i'm trying not to let this game get me down because i'm not stupid i've watched a lot of columbus blue jackets hockey lately i um, actually went to their game in minnesota last tuesday night they are really good at clogging up the middle and just making it a dumb, ugly game. And that's kind of what tonight was, was a dumb, ugly game. Back to the Lindholm goal. He scores at the 11-14 mark of the third on a really a good play by Andrew Majupani. None of this happens without his play. He gets it out front to Lindholm. Lindholm gets his 29th of the year, and it's 2-1. to one. And it just seemed at that point that I'm not going to say that I thought Calgary was going to come back to tie it or win it. I just thought, whoa, look at how the mannerisms of the players changed. Look at how the mannerisms of the fans, everything just kind of changed. And then with at the 1817 mark, Matthew Kachuk tips in a shot from Giordano, assist from Anderson also. I don't know if I actually could chuck tip this one. I thought it went off Wierenski's stick, but who cares? A goal's a goal, and I could care less at this time of year. Who in the hell scores our goals? Anyways, a nice shot. Ties the game. 42 seconds left. The extra attacker had just gotten on the ice. We're tied at two. Overtime, pretty back and forth, but you know, really not a wild overtime. Talbot made one good save, um, but not, not a real wild run and gun type overtime. More of a possession with, I'd call it possession with chances, not any glorious chances. Then with 11 seconds left in the game, there was a mad scramble in front of the net. Monahan had two really good chances, but to his credit, stuck with the play and was able to feed Brody out in the slot, and he buried it top shelf over Corp- Corpusallo, and Flames win. Four. 449 mark, 11 seconds to go. Finally, we're the buzzer beaters, and it's two points for the Calgary Flames. The Blue Jackets, though, I'll give them credit. They played a very, very strong road game. They clogged up the middle so well. They are they just they clogged up the middle very, very well and just made it, like I said, they dumbed the game down and made it um, a difficult game for the Calgary Flames. The Flames, though, did not help themselves. They lacked intensity, I thought, for the most part, and they had way too many tur- turnovers, especially early on in the game. But I'm proud of them. They stayed in the fight, and they won this game. They need to quit being pretty. They need to play an intense, simple game like they did on the road. Cannot afford starts like this anymore. The games are just getting too few, and points are getting so, so critical. Every team, everywhere, the hot podcast network all right we've said the word consistency about eight thousand times this year and i'm yeah i'm tired of talking about it i am i i am i'm tired of it but you know what how do you not talk about it and what is our expectation for this team at home well 
Let me answer those questions. Consistency, I don't know how you fix it. You can't just come into the locker room and say we're going to be more consistent. What I would do if I was Jeff Ward is I would talk about simply simplifying the game and playing a road-style grinded-out game at home. Expectations at home. My expectations as a fan are to be a force like we were at the beginning of the year at home. Teams are supposed to be better at home, not better on the road. And sadly, this was, well, I'm happy, don't don't get me wrong, but this was Calgary's 10th come from behind win. That's the second most in the National Hockey League, only behind Washington Capitals. Now, this is not a stat that you want to be proud of. It's actually a recipe for disaster. And I've probably said that way too many times on this podcast this year. But we've been saying it all season. And I got a kick out of it. After the second period, I was watching the game tonight on Sportsnet. And Brian Burke and Elliot Friedman ripped the flames, which is not very common. You don't hear those guys rip the flames too often. But they ripped them for a poor effort on home ice. Elliot looked like completely disappointed that we were getting this effort from this team at this time of year in this critical of a game. And you know what? I was too. They got me even more pissed off about this game. And you know what? Think about this, Flames fans. I'm not trying to be Debbie Downer, but this team doesn't come back from this. Holy hell breaks loose, and we sound like Vancouver Canucks fans. I guarantee it. After hours tonight on Fan 960, Steinberg would have been getting fielding tons and tons of bad, bad, bad questions. We would have. We'd have been jumping off bridges like the Canucks are doing right now. I'm just glad they found a way to do this. But think about this, guys. At home this year, we're 15, 12, and 4. But in the last 14 home games, we're 5, 9, and 2. That's not good. Thank goodness our road record is 20, 14, and 3 this year. And we just got off a great road trip. We only have four more road games all year. So we need to find a way to be good at home. When this schedule first came out this summer, I looked at the stretch run, and I was happy as hell because I'm like, all right, we're at home. we got home, 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 home. This is great for the Flames. Maybe not. Jeff Ward commented after the game tonight that he's tired of hearing how they suck at home and that this win tonight is going to give them confidence at home. And we'll shut the – he didn't say – that's that was his comment – I think what he wanted to say was this will maybe shut us up and the critics up. I don't know. I think I need to see it a couple more nights. We get a good performance against Arizona, and boy, if we could get a good performance against Vegas, which never happens, that would be amazing. But this team just plays differently at home. There's much more turnovers, and they just try to play too fancy of a game. Everything they want to look pretty and highlight reel. And although that game in Florida was not a masterpiece, they played shutdown hockey and capitalized on mistakes. That's how you should play at home. They just look too uptight at home. Playing your home rink should be an advantage. Use the fans for positive energy. What happened to this Flames team that started this season so good at home? I miss that. This win tonight was big. This win tonight was at home. And I am just praying Praying, praying, praying. It starts a new trend at home. NHL news, opinions, and controversy. All right, let's talk Austin Zarnick. And why is this guy still in Stockton? I've always been told, and I've always, when I coached, I always felt like it was the most important thing I could do was to field the best roster possible. Now, yes, there's injuries and there's things like that will keep players out of the lineup. But you're always supposed to field the best roster. Now, Austin Zarnick was injured on October 24th, just a month into the season. As a matter of fact, he played eight games. He had two goals, one assist, three points, was a plus one. That's pretty good. We signed this guy for depth scoring can flames management look in the mirror and say that they feel comfortable that they've given austin zarnick a fair chance 
This guy's history next year, guys. He's not re-signing with us. Why would he? He's not getting a shot. And I'm convinced that Austin Zarnick would get a shot on other teams. I really believe that. Now, in Stockton, since his injury, he's played 29 games. He's got 14 goals, 17 assists, 31 points. That's good numbers in the AHL. I believe he's sitting fourth or fifth in points on a good Stockton Heat team. His final three games before his injury, he had two goals and an assist. I finally thought he was starting to gain momentum and gain steam. Now, he was signed from the in the offseason, the 2018-19 season, from the Boston Bruins as a free agent. I was... I'm not going to lie. When I when they signed him, I kind of was like, all right, who's this guy? And everybody told me that he's going to add scoring to this team. Smaller stature, but a hard worker. I can't say honestly that I've loved his play when he's been up with the big team. But I've been impressed with his speed. And he finds a way to put the puck in the net, too. Well, we need speed. And... Austin Zarnick brings that. Now, can we look in the mirror and say he brings, that Zach Ronaldo brings more to the table than Austin Zarnick? Not in my mind. I pick Zarnick over Ronaldo, but Ronaldo's on the big team. Couldn't Austin Zarnick fill in for a struggling Dylan Dubé right now? Give Dylan Dubé just a little bit of rest, get him back on track, get him some confidence, and Austin Zarnick could fill that role for a game or two. Austin Zarnick could fill for Tobias Reeder, who hasn't been horrible this year. He's been great on the penalty kill. But, I mean, do we have a better chance of Austin Zarnick scoring than we do Tobias Reeder? I think so. Do I want to give up that penalty killing? No, I really don't. But, you know, sometimes if you got Jankowski in there and Backland, I think we're probably okay on the penalty kill. Hell, I even kind of penciled in, and I talked about this numerous times on the show, that I kind of wanted Zarnik up so he could fill in for Lucic every once in a while to keep him. He's not the youngest guy in the world, and we're going to need that big body in the playoffs. Couldn't he sub in for him? Zarnik's a versatile player that adds scoring depth. Is it a ton of scoring depth? No, it's not. I'm not stupid. He's not going to come in and be a point-of-game player. But I think he brings more to the table than Zach Ronaldo. And when we got back from the All-Star break, I fully expected, and Zarnik was healthy, I was fully expected him to get called up. Austin Zarnik makes this team a better team. Hey, let's win some money. Make your hockey knowledge pay off by playing. Playline, 50K, the Hockey Podcast Network Daily Lotto. Win big with Playline. Use promo code THPN and you're set to win big bucks. Oh yeah, it takes some hockey knowledge, but you have that. All right, time for a little bit of Flames news. Derek Ryan played his 300th NHL game tonight, Wednesday night. Versus Columbus, congratulations to him. Boy, the story of Derek Ryan making it to the NHL is just a, a feel-good story. Flames prospect Dustin Wolf named WHL Goalie of the Year. The 19-year-old playing at Everett went 9-1-0 in February. And for a seventh-round draft pick, boy, we keep bringing him up, don't we? Is this guy for real? Is this guy going to get a shot in the next couple years? Maybe Dustin Wolf is our goalie of the future travis hamannick is joining calgary for the morning skates now he's wearing a yellow non-contact jersey good news there still i believe is quite a ways out but uh, anytime you're back on the ice that's a good thing matthew kachuk takes a shot five minutes into the game in the inside of his knee it looked like to me and was laboring went off went down the tunnel came back up at the end of the period was the last guy walking down the bench with a significant limp. Um, 
played normal shifts in the second and third, but uh, maybe favored it just a little bit. But I'm more worried about how that his body is going to react to that come, uh, you know, tomorrow morning and, and how he fares um, during the night because you just never know sometimes how a body is going to bounce back from that and, and heal. So we'll be all watching uh, Matthew Kachuk here on Thursday and Friday in the in the during practice to see how he reacts to blocking that shot. A little trip around the National Hockey League, some things to talk about. Kevin Fiala, who was written off as a, a horrible addition to the Minnesota Wild last year, has kind of been proving people wrong. He's got his fifth consecutive game with multiple points dating back to February 25th. Only two other Wild players have ever done that in history, Brian Ralston and Marion Gabrick. And you know what? The Wild are 6-3-0 and since Dean Evenson took over as interim head coach. I thought the Bruce Boudreaux firing was ridiculous and horrible timing. But the Wild have been rolling. And they remain one point back of a wild card. Well, actually more than that now after tonight's standings. They, no, one point back of a wild card spot. And this team is on a roll. They are 6-3-1 and one in their last 10 games. And man, where will where will the wild stop? Is this a team that we need to worry about in contention for a wild card spot in the Stanley Cup playoffs? News comes out of the general managers' meetings today that the NHL is projecting to increase the salary cap for next season. Bill Daly announced that the cap will be between eighty four and eighty eight point two million for next year. The current cap right now is eighty one point five. Wow, that is good news if you're a team that is cap-strapped, which is about every damn team in this league. So it'll definitely help Calgary in figuring out where they go forward and who they add this summer and how it all fits into place. The NHL has also talked about this coronavirus outbreak, which kind of has us all on edge, you know. And I, I wasn't one that was too worried about it until this last few days. The NHL has announced that it's banned its employees from travel outside of North America in response to the widening widening of the outbreak. If an individual ends up in a location affected that the league is mandating they take two-week quarantine before they can return to work, as of Wednesday, there has been 94,000 confirmed cases of people contracting the virus around the world, including 3,200 deaths, Canada currently has 33 cases, while the state of Washington has a total of nine deaths already and new cases coming up every day in the U.S. I, I'm i not sure what I take what my take is on this. I, it is a worrisome thing. I've worried about it more in the last couple of days. Um, I'm not hitting the panic button, but not only how this will affect hockey, how it will affect our day-to-day life. Switzerland's top hockey league postponed its playoffs until the middle of March while other sporting events around the globe have been canceling or playing in front of empty stadiums. The commissioner did say that they will be monitoring this day to day and uh, didn't want to speculate on what will happen or if this NHL would ever play to empty arenas or can, you know, talk about postponing the playoffs or anything like that. That's far, far too ahead of the situation right now. Um, They do recommend, though, that players um, refrain from contacting as many people through high fives, handshakes, uh, and whatever, just like all of us in everyday situations, should probably be a little bit more aware of in our day-to-day life and try to prevent the spread of this disease, um, which is flat-out scary, I guess, um, and hopefully something that uh, can be under control in our country of Canada and the U S and something that uh, does not affect our day-to-day life or the sport. We love hockey fan question from Brad Prather from Calgary. He has won a contest and is a listener on the show. And I stole that question from Twitter on him. I I loved a question he posed last night on Twitter and I thought, you know what? I love it. I hope Brad's listening to this episode. His question was if you could meet a past or present flames player, who would it be? And what would you ask them? So I thought a little about this and I thought, well, 
you know, when I when I talk to Theo Fleury and ask him about his life and his in his struggles, and I thought, you know, I'd love to sit down with Theo Fleury. I've I've had the opportunity to talk to Theo in the past, and he's a great, great guy. And, but I've been a pass on that because I'm, I've listened to his response, and um, I kind of know his story. And I thought, well, when I want to talk to like Johnny Gaudreau or Sean Monahan about, or Jerome McGinley about the cup run in 04 and the, the stuff that happened behind the scenes and the parties and the fun on behind the scenes or uh, how they felt when the goal was disallowed or, you know, all those things. Maybe I would want to talk to a current flame and pick their brain on how they handled the Bill Peter situation and how that was dealt with in the locker room behind the scenes. Um, So many questions, so many thoughts. And maybe I'm being goofy and maybe I'm being real, real simple minded when it comes to this question. But I want to talk to my number two favorite flame of all time. That's Mika Kiprasov, a quiet guy. Haven't had the privilege of ever meeting Mika Kiprasov. And and, and I've always wanted to, to visit with him. But I'd want to talk with him. And you know what I you know what I would ask him about? Something so crazy, I know none of you would even guess this. But I'd want to talk to him about the little kid that used to stand behind him during warm-ups and mimic every single move. I thought that was one of the most amazing stories I've watched. And I want to talk to Mika Kiprasov and see how it affected him. How was it to watch somebody idolize you so much and mimic every single move and be so good at it too? I would love to get Mika Kiprasov's take on that young boy. I believe they've met. I believe I read a story that they have met. Um, I just would love to get Mika Kiprasov's take on that great story. Get all your Flames Unfiltered podcasts, team news, team updates, and highlights at flamesunfiltered.com. All right, time to preview a couple weekend games, and we'll take a quick look at that Western Conference playoff race, and then we'll let you get about your day. It is a Thursday episode of Flames Unfiltered on the Hockey Podcast Network. Game previews. Arizona comes into town Friday night. Calgary currently sits 35, 26, and 7, 77 points. Good for third in the Pacific. Tonight's big win, 3-2 overtime win over the Columbus Blue Jackets. Arizona had a great win tonight, a 4-2 win over the Vancouver Canucks. That's always a good thing when you're beating the Canucks. Their record, 32, 27, and 8, 74 points. Good for fifth in the Pacific. And they are in the one point. Actually, they're tied for the final wild card spot. They fall back because of the tiebreakers. The season series between these two teams, Calgary won 4-3 on November 5th in Calgary. Lost to Arizona 3-0 on November 16th in Arizona. Calgary backed that up with another win 5-2 on December 10th in Arizona. It has been a long time, and Friday night's matchup at the Saddle Dome will be the final meeting of the season between these two teams. Vegas comes to town on Sunday, and boy, oh boy, that scares the living daylights out of me. Vegas wins game one of the year on October 12th in Vegas, 6-3. to three. I was at that game, and it was very, very, very disappointing. Then, just a month later, November 17th in Vegas again, Calgary gets thumped 6 to nothing, and what I thought was the worst outing of the season for the Calgary Flames, and that is tough because there's been a few this year. Sunday's matchup is game three of a four-game season series between the two. The final two will take place in Calgary this Sunday night. And then game four of the series, April 2nd in Calgary to finish up the season. Two points against the Vegas Golden Knights would be amazing. Let's take a quick look before we get out of here at the Western Conference playoff races. St. Louis holds a lead in the Central with 90 points. Colorado just two points back. Had a loss tonight to Anaheim. So that's day stay two points back of St. Louis. Both teams are red hot. St. Louis 8-2-0 in their last 10. Winners of eight in a row. Colorado 7-1-2 in their last 10. Dallas sits in third spot. Just six points back of Colorado with 82 points in the Pacific. It is 
tight, tight, tight. Vegas sits atop with 82 points, played one more game than Edmonton, who was just two points behind them. Both teams red hot. Vegas 9-1-0 and in their last 10. Edmonton 6-2-2, and winners of three straight. Calgary currently holds down that third spot. They are 6-3-1 and in their last 10, winners of two in a row. They sit it with 77 points. Then the wild card starts three points back, and there is a log jam of teams vying for the two wild card spots. The, uh, Vancouver holds down the f- top wild card spot right now with 74 points. They are struggling, losers of four in a row. Winnipeg also 74 points. They have played two more games than, Winni- or than Vancouver, so they slot in that second spot. Winnipeg 5-4-1 and one in their last 10. Arizona with a win tonight moves up to 74 points, tied with Winnipeg and Vancouver. They do lose the tiebreaker, so they sit just outside of a wildcard spot, but yet tied in points. Minnesota one point back of Arizona. They've played two less games in Arizona, so games in hand for the Minnesota Wild, and they are 6-3-1 and one in their last 10. The final team vying for a spot is nashville sitting with 72 points just two back of a wild card spot five four and one in their last 10 and they have played also 66 games so they have two games in hand on many teams in this western conference playoff race do we dare say chicago's dead they have two games in hand too they've only played 66 games they have 68 points winners of three in a row chicago is a long shot because of the amount of teams they have to jump but you know what probably fair to say that anything's probably possible with a log jam the way we have it it is going to be a lot of fun down the stretch the western conference playoffs are heating heating up tonight was way scarier than any flames fan wanted it two points you know what as frustrating as the game that was I'm just happy we got two points. We'll take them any way we can get them. We hold serve. Keep our spot as the number three spot in the Pacific Division. Arizona comes to town Friday night. Check out that game at the Saddle Dome. Check out flamesunfiltered.com for all kinds of Flames news. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you on next Monday's episode. Get connected. Flames Unfiltered can be found on Twitter at Flame Unfiltered. And also make sure you check out our Facebook page at Flames Unfiltered. Check out host Brad Brood on Twitter at Brad Brood. And if you like what you hear, rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. You can find Flames Unfiltered on all the major podcast players. Consider subscribing to Inside Edge Hockey News on Patreon. That'll get you exclusive content and much more. Thanks again and enjoy the hockey. Thanks for tuning in to Flames Unfiltered. Check back for more action-packed Calgary Flames talk. You're listening to the Hockey Podcast Network on Twitter at HockeyPodNet. New episodes every Monday and Thursday. Download at the HockeyPodcastNetwork.com or wherever you get your podcasts from. This has been a production of Inside Edge Hockey News Radio, brought to you by the Hockey Podcast Network. This production is copyrighted and distributed by the Inside Edge Hockey Media Group.